all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where we bring you back to back updates and information as to the hot uh, in case you have not joined our social media handle what are you waiting for kindly go ahead and subscribe like comment share and also remember to all your notification buttons so that whenever our news enter you will be the first we go collect them you are with one and only Nyoko Puss in the studio. I am today going to be carrying you from one place to another, but I no go carry you to go where you no know. I deal with you, bagam for you. I say second pay for everybody. Une follow la umibo unusirike. Eba obeni jana anywhere you go. Uh, they say if you know see an evil man there, just turn back, they go because prosperity no day for that land though. <laughs> I don't know how he was used to mind me. You know what I go? Uh, to be able to be in a lot of places where there are prosperities. Uh, of course, Nibo are blessed. Uh, there is this um, debate who are the Jews of Africa. And everybody have confirmed it that Ndibo are the Jews of Africa. Uh, the debate is whether uh, Ndibo came from the Jews or the Jews came from Ndibo. Uh, because um, uh, the Enugu, the port that was dug out there uh, some years ago uh, by uh, root constructors, uh, shows that um, there has been existence of people there a long time ago uh, when uh, archaeologists and the rest of them tested the port and found out that it has existed like hundreds of years ago. And it shows that there has been existence there. But of course, you know that there is what is called migration, and it has not been proven whether it was Ndibo who were the people dwelling there or another tribe of people, because there is migration. In the olden days, when people migrate from one place to another, even though uh, there are originators of the land, those uh, whose the land uh, their father gave them birth into the land, and they believe that they were the dwellers there. But according to that part, it shows that Ndibo has been existing before now, um, even before the the the, the years uh, of that of the Israelites. But there is this speculation that a man called uh, Eri, who crossed the Omambara River, who is one of the sons of God, or the grandsons of God, I think one of the sons of God, uh, due to migration cross, uh, that he is the father of Ndibo. That is why you see places like Agopundre and um, Agule where uh, there is Obu Gade. And that's a trace of history. That's how we trace our history. Meanwhile, welcome back. Uh, it is shut for Adabra State now as IPOB don't want against intimidation of Biafra and defend seat at home. And uh, the indigenous people of Biafra, they want Soludo on this one or they say, hmm. Uh, they no want to uh, make the Biafrans become intimidated because of this seat at home. Or make we go to the full detail of the information and uh, make you see what in the happen there. But of course, you know that I'm um, politicians. They know the griot. Uh, if you see Soludo, that's not the man uh, who is there for your scream. Uh, some of you will be saying, no, no, Soludo. Soludo is the governor of Anambra State. A uh, state will be saying he's there for the southeastern part of Nigeria. Uh, now this man where they see for your scream. Now him be the governor where they govern that state. So you know, there was some uh, some time ago the the governor of um CBN and he is he also upholds a doctorate degree. So he's a full fledged man. Uh, when it comes to academic, uh, he is uh, well prepared. Uh, politics he is there also. Um, but um if there are, some people are trying to do comparison. Uh, between Soludo and uh, Nani Pitobi, how he led Anambra State, uh, and even what is his name, Obiano. And um, people are saying that there is a, there are big lapses uh, when you compare Soludo and Pitobi, that Pitobi was able to handle a lot of things. Another man that, uh, you know, had good way from the Anambra was Ngige. Ngige had good way for the Anambra people because for the few times Ngige was in office, uh, Anambra people enjoyed good road and the rest of them. Ngige was one of the governors those days. I could remember that uh, if they are doing road construction, you will see the governor coming at the site of the construction to see what the constructors are doing. And um, that gave the constructors the fear that the governor is coming to check his work. And I think um, that is what is called accountability. 
you are a governor who has signed a contract and you should also come there to inspect the contract to make sure that the people are giving you the quality you want and that was what Ngige represented that time even though uh, the history said that he came into power through Krukere way after him and P2B went to court, P2B won and P2B uh, was able to go back to power. But I think um, people like Ngige also should be given another opportunity in Anambra State. But there are some things that people will do. You will know that these people have had interest for their community. Ngige did not only develop his own town, he developed a lot of places both, you know, Gide, Opo, and the rest of them. Meanwhile, let's go to this battle, battle banter, or should I say word banter, between the indigenous people of Biafra and um, Governor Charles Chukoma Soludo. Oh yeah, let's go down. The indigenous people of Biafra has called on Governor Charles Chukoma Soludo to halt what they describe as the continuous intimidation of Biafrans in Anambra State. In a statement released by IPOB's media and publicity secretary, Emma Powerful, titled IPOB calls on Soludo and his cronies to be careful over continuous intimidation of Biafrans in Anambra State. The group emphasized that the ongoing Monday sit at home protests in the Southeast are not a result of coercion, but rather a voluntary act of solidarity with their detained leader, Mazen Nam Dekano. IPOB urged Governor Soludo not to underestimate the deep affection that Biafrans, both within the 13 Igbo dominated states in Nigeria and in the diaspora, have for Kano. They stated that the sit at home protests, which were initially called off by IPOB but continue to be observed, represent a form of self sacrifice and a peaceful means of expressing displeasure over Kano's prolonged detention. The statement read, We, the great and noble family of the indigenous people of Biafra, under the command of Mazen Nam Bekan, wish to inform Governor Chuko Masoludo not to underestimate the deep affection Biafrans in Co, Global Land, and beyond half for Mazen Nam Bekan. People are staying at home for, him, for home on Mondays voluntarily, not because of threats from individuals or coercion by any actors. All they want is the release of Mazi Nam de Kano. The group further criticized the Southeast governors, including Soludo, for failing to act on their promises to formally request Kano's release from President Bola Tinubu. IPOB reminded the public that nearly six months have passed since the governors resolved in a meeting in Enugu to visit President, President for Kano's release, yet no action has been taken. Insecurity in Anambra and across the southeast continues, and we believe that the only solution is the release of Mazin Nam de Kano. The statement added, You governors are playing politics with the sit at home protests and the insecurity that plagues, plagues our land because you fail to recognize the deep seated anger our people feel over your inactions. IPOB also accused the governor of benefiting financially from the insecurity in the region, alleging that they are taking advantage of inflated security budgets. They insisted that those participating in the sit-at-home protests are exercising their right to peaceful protests and should not be subjected to intimidation or punishment. The group concluded by affirmation that the sit-at-home protests will continue until Kano is released, urging Saludo to reconsider his approach to this issue. Those choosing to sit at home are uh, doing so far for Mazin Nam de Kano as no one else. You cannot stop it by force. All right, wonderful people, welcome back. This is coming from Emma Powerful, uh, the spokesperson for the indigenous people of Biafra. And um, I know some people are posing some questions to me. They are saying, Nyokopus, who is even this Emma Powerful? <laughs> Me, I don't know the man because I have not seen him before. But um, some people are saying that the name Emma Powerful is just an office name for the indigenous people of Biafra. And that is so funny. <laughs> As it be, let's go to another information from the Ohanese Dibo. As Katakata dot the Folly Deer. Remember? Uh, that it seems as if the seat of Arezedibo has taken a lot of people. Now, 
there is a fight uh, who is going to become the next president general of an AZD war and that is the current fight that is going on and I'm going to take you straight to the issue, straight to the matter direct so that you will see what is happening. I thought that by this time uh, that what we'll be reading in our area is peace because everybody has seen the condition of the nation. Uh, there is inflation everywhere. There is food scarcity, uh, the air scarcity, uh, fuel scarcity, and the rest of them. And I'm thinking that this should be the time uh, every every region should come together and see best to how best they can sort their problem out. Uh, but the politicians are fakao. They know they hear. They know they listed. Meanwhile, let's go down to the full detail of the information. As of recently, who has become their uh, started their own banter and battle of who becomes the next president of an S and I didn't expect this from an S and but uh, meanwhile, it has happened. And my work is to make sure that I bring you the full detail of the information. Let's go down so that you will see what is happening there. Ohan and Dibo condemned Alex scheme to install former governor as president general. Who is this former governor? Follow me as we go down to the full detail of the information. The Ohan and Dibo, the APES Igbo Social Cultural Organization representing the interests and aspirations of Igbo people find it imperative to address a matter of profound concern that threatens the integrity That threatens the uh, the integrity and democratic foundation of our esteemed organization with less than 90 days until the scheduled ONSD general election on January 10th to 11th, 2025. We feel compelled to issue an unequivocal warning against the uh, surreptitious schemes that are purportedly being orchestrated by two governors from the southeast. <laughs> Recent actions suggest that an unpatriotic Igbo organization has been mobilized to entice Chief Iked Ohakim, a respected former governor, into pursuing a non existent position as President General of ONS and Igbo. We urge Chief, Chief Ohakim to summon his righteous resolve and only if we vocally decline such temptations. At this stage of his life, with a rich and storied political history, we implore him to focus on the political landscape where his leadership is genuinely needed, whether that be as a governor for a single term, senator, vice president, or even the president of Nigeria in the near future. Should Chief Ohakim heed to the voice of wisdom, Ahanez Ndibo will frequently support his re-election as governor of Imo State. <laughs> Uh, I think that uh, this, yeah, should I call it a sarcasm or indirect uh, talk or a political <laughs> toss? But me, why? This is not the full detail. We are still going down. Okay, Chief of Hakim must take heed and be mindful of those deceitful political elites who have misled two Igbo elder statesmen from Imo State, leading them to dismiss her and despite the numerous admonition from Igbo College of Archbishop and Bishop advocating for peace and restoration within Ones and Dibo. He should recognize that the leadership of Ones and Dibo is presently in a constitutionally mandated transition period and it would be both short-sighted and detrimental for him to act as an impediment to the emergence of the next president general from River State. <laughs> I told you that this is a political banter uh, they are now bringing the people of River State into the matter. As a sagacious leader, Chief Ikedo Hakim is suddenly away, suddenly away of the sacred opportunity he was afforded during his tenure as governor of Imo State from 20 to 2007 to 2011. In spite of the myriad challenges that ma marred his administration, the divine has cleansed his reputation thus. It is incumbent upon him to reject the allure of those whose intentions do not align with the prosperity of our people. He must refuse any invitation to act as an obstacle in the critical transition phase or for honors and Dibu. The restoration of our Igbo lineage in River State, which has suffered greatly since the Biafra War, is a mission requiring collective strength and unity. We strongly condemn any attempt to amend the Ohanes Ndibu constitution with the aim of facilitating a tenor 
elongating for the current president general from Imo state by any means. Such actions are inherently legitimated and betray the principle upon which our esteemed organization was founded. We characterize such proposal as so deed, satanic and barbaric in nature, and we wish to communicate this without any ambiguity. Furthermore, we assert categorically there is no justification for the underhanded maneuvering aimed at sidelining River State in the election for the next President General. The collective identity of our lineage in Rivers has faced relentless challenges since the conclusion of Biafra War in 1970, which have resulted in their marginalization. To deny River State the opportunity to assume the position of President General in 2025 would constitute an egregious extension of, 2020, of 24 years of subjugation, an affront to the unity and aspiration of our people. This is a clarion call for us to reclaim and fortify our bonds with our compatriots in River State. Our efforts are both a political necessity and moral obligation, echoing the responsibilities we hold towards one another as members of the illustrious Igbo heritage. We must dismantle the artificial barriers that have severed, served to divide us since the end of the Biafra conflict. As we approach the conclusion of the current President General Steno from Imo State, we reiterate that there is no vacancy to be fired through the suitable means. The palpable discontent permeating our communities, a reflection of the incessant tragedies we face, should serve as a resounding wake-up call to repudiate these entrenched illicit agendas. The seats of Igbo land and Chuku Okikabiyama are displeased. And we implore all involved in these conspiracies to cease their treacherous design and uphold the tenets of the Ohanes and the Igbo constitution, particularly regarding River State's rightful turn as President General. Mazio Okechuku Isiguzoro, Secretary General of Ohanes and the Igbo, has definitely stated that our organization is neither a refuge for failed politi politicians nor a channel for political allies seeking to enhance their ambition at the expense of our collective identity. We start poised against any attempt to usher a former governor into the leadership of Ohanes and the Igbo. Those contemplating such action must heed the warnings of our ancestral spirit or historical precedents show that those who defy divine will face severe repercussions. In conclusion, let this press release resonate as a firm affirmation of our unwavering commitment to transparency, unity, and the indomitable spirit of Igbo people. We call upon all members of Anais and Igbo as well as our fellow citizens to remain vigilant in the confronting these challenges together we will ensure that our next leader emerges through a transparent process that embodies the collective will of the Igbo people, an authentic representation of our hope, value, and aspiration. Sign, Mazi Okechuku Isiguzoro, General Secretary on SND Igbo. <laughs> all right. Uh, if you go, if you are with me through all those readings, you will find out that what uh, Isiguzoro is trying to communicate to everybody is that um, uh, this is the time for the river state people to take position because all those English and um and write up and long story is that um and that this is the time of river state that uh, uh there are some people who are advising Ike de Hakim who was the former governor of um of uh Imo State from 2007 to 2011. Of course, of course, you know then that there were. A lot of propagandas that uh, that you know went with uh, Mazi Ike de Hakim, who was the former governor of Imo State, from him um, Mbaka singing for him that he flogged the Reverend Father and the rest of them. A lot of people developed hatred for Ike, and during that voting and election it was when uh, what is his name? Uh, uh, what is his name? The former governor of uh, Rota Sokorocha emerged. Rota Sokorocha won that election. And Rocha Sokorocha became the two-time governor of Imo State from that 2011 down uh, to when Emeki Hedioha uh, was declared the winner 
and uh, the going of court of Hopus or the man and the rest of them. But meanwhile, uh, what this guy is trying to say that um is that some people are compelling Ikedi to become the next uh, president general of an SND Ibo. And um according to Isi Guzoro, he said that and that is not what um uh, Ikedi or Hakim should be pursuing now, that he should go ahead with pursuing his political career, whether becoming the one uh, the next one time governor of Imo State or maybe becoming the vice president or even the president in the nearby future, but contesting for uh, the president general of an SND, but according to Isis Guru, that this is the tenure of the river state, the river state people to take over as as the president general of an SND, but that this has been the loophole uh, immediately after the 1967 to 1970 Biafra Nigeria civil war. And what I'm I, looking at that history, you find out that if you remember, you remember that most of the Igbo people who owned land and landed properties in Patakot, those properties were not given were not given back to them. A lot of them, the people who were there, occupied the property and refused to give it back to the Igbo. And um, I'm not trying to bring what is called tribalism, but if you watch the record of the, the Igbos and that of the South South people, you will find out that there, there is no correlation. There is no correlation. There is no unity. Uh, there has been always a fallout. Uh, Ojuku tried it with them and it failed. Imagine that they tried, tried it with Asari Dokubo. It failed. Everybody that tried it, it has always failed. So I think it's high time Ndibo called themselves for a meeting. I know the people that are Ndibo. Yes, there is no need of uh, dragging Niger Delta and all of that. The main real Igbo people, if they want to go, should go. And they become their own. You don't know that there are oil in, even in Anambra and other states. But you will not know that one. So I don't think um, even Ohajabama, Ohajabama have oil. All those places have oil. So I don't think there is any need of need. Uh, uh, what about uh, 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 going down to... To, to other part of Imo state, there are oil there. In Anambra is there too. So there is no need of uh, Ndibo trying to make sure that they are bringing and they are carrying the South South people along. South South people are doing their own thing. They will always betray Ndibo. They have betrayed Ndibo several times. During the time of Ojuku, they betrayed. During the time of, uh, of uh, uh, when Mazina and the Canon was trying to have some affiliation, ally. Making uh, Asari Dokubo be become his ally, they betrayed too. So, what are you trying to tell me? Meanwhile, uh, this is where I'll be winding down the course. And if this is your first time of coming across our channel, you kindly go ahead. I am still your one and only favorite Jokopus master, where they deal with you.